first of all, it's uh, great to get back out on the field today. Uh, it's, uh, the calendar has turned to April, and uh, we're in the middle of spring practice, and uh, it's an exciting time here at South Carolina. And uh, the growth of our football team is uh, going to be put, you know, critical over the next three weeks and working up to the spring game. So uh, with all that, I'll take uh, any uh, questions that you may have. I think everybody on the call knows the drill. Raise your hand, and we'll get to you as soon as we can. And the first one goes to Colin Taylor. Coach Eskins, I'm just curious now that you've been with this group now for a couple weeks and, and on the practice field for a couple times, what are your just general impressions of the, the group you're being able to work with? Well, I think it's a group that obviously has got a mix of uh, guys that have played and some guys that haven't played. Uh, so there's a, a mix of guys with some experience and some guys have never been on the field. So, But this offense is new for everybody, you know, in, including myself, including them. And uh, I think it's uh, it's a work in progress, to be honest with you. Uh, we're still we're still just trying to figure out who's going to play where, and you know, let alone what plays we're going to run, things like that. You know, so uh, th that's the beauty of spring practice: is the ability to learn, a uh, the ability to put in a uh, an offense, to put in a mindset, and uh, we'll work from there. So it's a work in progress. Other questions for coach? Come on, you guys are easy today. Yeah. Colin again. What about now that you've worked in the offense a little bit, you said it's new. What are some impressions of that, and how do you feel like the guys have gone about learning what you've been able to throw at them? Well, I, you know, it's certainly we've thrown a lot at them in, in four practices. And, uh, you know, whether it's from a protection standpoint, from a run game standpoint, from a concept, from a motion and shift, and just a number of different things that we've thrown at all of our players. And, uh, again, I think it's the way you do it. You try to – See, you know, see what their ability is to learn. Number one, number two is see what they're able to do, and what they're able to retain and be able to function, and uh, you know, uh, be able to win, win, win on a particular play. So, at the end of the day, we'll be able to see and and figure out what we're going to end up doing as we move forward. But I think it's the right thing to do now is to 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 give them as much po much as possible and see what they can uh, retain and function with. Greg Hadley from State. Hey, Coach. You kind of talk about teaching them a new offense and adjusting to this new system. You got a lot of guys that, you know, coming back have started a lot of games. How does that balance? Does that make it easier for them knowing that, or is it everyone starting from zero? I just think at the end of the day, you understand concepts of what you're trying to do, whether it's from a protection standpoint or from a run game standpoint, and you have this overall vision of what this structure should look like. Guys that have played will have an advantage over people that haven't played. OK, and uh, certainly there's some guys that have played, uh, but there's certainly some guys that have played that are not performing like I want them to perform or will, will they will perform. Right. I got some younger guys that nobody knows anything about that have performed pretty well. So it's this combination of a n number of different things. They got to understand the concept. All right. The overall vision and concept of this particular play versus this particular defense. And whoever can do that with the best technique and the most physicality are the people that are going to play, whether they've played or not. Josh Kendall. Hey, Greg. How many folks do you want to have who can snap in a game, and how many do you think you have now? I, I, you can, never can have too many. I've coached in a game where you got to your fourth before. So you better have four that can, all right? I hope we never get to that. But you better have four that can. And uh, we'll, we'll teach. You know, right now, again, we're really working with three or four different guys at this point. Um, and we'll teach another two or three uh, once we move a little bit further into spring practice, certainly into the summer months and into camp. So, you know, at the end of the day, we'll have six or seven kids that have the ability to snap the football. And, uh, and, and hopefully you have five or six that you can go out there and win football games with, truthfully. So really just working with three or four kids right now. And on a different subject, Justin Turntine, big guy who came in here uh, fairly inexperienced last year. What have you seen from him? He, he's a work in progress. I think we all, you know, want him to be the best he can be. And I think it's a daily process with him, not, not just him, all of them. Uh, I think it's a daily process with each and every one of them. I mean, obviously, he's a guy that's uh, right now playing left tackle. And, uh, you know, that, that comes with a certain responsibility uh, playing that position. And uh, he's working there right now. And, and he, I, he made, he's made some progress. In fact, I thought today was maybe his best practice of the four. So that's a good thing. Thanks, Greg. 
Joe Machica. Hey, Coach. Uh, just wanted to ask. Uh, I know it's, it's still early on in spring ball, but has anyone stood out from like a leadership aspect of uh, of the team? And, uh, anybody? We have group a lot of guys. Leader? We have a lot of guys trying to lead right now, and that's a good thing, right? That's a good thing. Those leaders or all those people that are trying to lead need to go out there and perform on the field, and then that's when you ultimately end up seeing, you know, whatever that number of people is that will ultimately be the leaders on this football team. But there's a lot of guys trying to lead. And that's the culture that we are trying to uh, build and a, 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 a culture of accountability. And it's okay for your teammate to call you out, you know. And uh, so that's what we're trying to create. Um, but what we end up ultimately needing is guys that are trying to lead to making sure that they're performing at the highest level also. And then just to follow up, anybody that stood out to you or caught your eye in particular? So far, uh, are you talking about in the O line or what? Yeah, we're on the O line, yes, sir. I tell you, like I like I like what Vinnie Murphy's doing. I really do. He's a guy's working working his tail off. Um, you know, he's playing playing center and guard right now. I like I like what he's doing uh, as a guy that no one knows about, right? Because he hasn't played. Um, you know, I like what he's doing right now. If I were to just single one guy out, you know, that probably none of you have really heard that much about. Thank you. John Del Bianco. Hey, coach. You had said when we first first met you that you had you had already gotten to know uh, Marcus Satterfield, and you guys were talking. Just what have the past couple months been like? Just getting to getting in a room with him and talking offense and building this thing. Awesome, uh, phenomenal. He's uh, he is uh, all ball, and uh, he is uh, he works his tail off. Uh, he, he nonstop watching film, talking ball. Uh, all those types of things since we've been here. And uh, the best part about it is he listens. You know, everybody in the room has a voice, and everybody can express their opinion on certain things that is their expertise, and he listens. And if there's a better way to do it, that's the way we do it. And uh, I think that's a, that's, a, that's a mark of a good leader. And if I could follow up, you, you got to know him when he was really young as a, as a graduate assistant at Tennessee. Just how have you seen him evolve, you know, as, as a football coach now that he's, uh, you know, a decade plus into the business? Very good because of his work, ha work, work habits, the way he goes about it, his professionalism, everything about him um, is about getting himself better on a daily basis. Uh, obviously, then getting his room better, then giving the whole offense better, getting the coaches better. So he uh, he works extremely hard, extremely hard, and uh, I appreciate what he's doing right now. Thank you. Hill McGranahan. Hey, Coach, just a couple follow-ups to some things. Uh, I guess first, you mentioned Jazz working at left tackle. Who are some of the other guys who are in the mix there as well? Working where at left tackle? Yes, sir. <laughs> Everybody else? No, I'm, I'm just kidding. You know, just it, what we what we have done right now is like there's there's nobody circled in saying this is where they're playing or whatever. Uh, one of my things is that every kid has to be able to play as many positions as they possibly can. The guys that can play the most positions are generally going to end up being the guys that can play. All right. If you're a one position guy, you better dominate that one position, right? But if you are very good at five positions, right, and you have other guys that are not so good at certain things, then you have a better opportunity to get yourself on the field. And uh, so I'm not going in that way of this is who you are, this is where he's playing, because I have no idea at this point. Now, I can tell you that's where he's playing at this point. And we have, we, I've used probably seven other guys played at least one snap at left tackle so far. Okay. So, so there's – like you asked about one particular person, that's the guy that is playing. But there's about seven or eight other guys that's played over there too. So yeah. I don't know. Got like, I got 15 guys. I think, you know, whatever. Maybe all but three haven't been over there at one point or another. Okay. And, and going back to Vinny, uh, and obviously you're new around here, but can, can you speak to how much he's developed or where he's developed uh, – Maybe seeing practice film from from previous years with him. I think he just works at the game. He loves football. And he works at the game. You have to kick him out of the, this place. He always wants to talk ball. He's always wanting to watch film. It's important to him. And um, you know, again, I think the more people that we can get overall, and I'm not just singling out Vinny. The more people we can get working like that is what we want. All right. What we want, not just in the O-line, that's everybody, offense, defense, special teams, the whole everybody, 
And uh, the more people we get wanting to work that way, uh, the faster we can move, move, continue to move forward. Thank you. Yes, sir. Colin Taylor. I'm curious, just from an installation standpoint, how do you approach that from an offensive line? Is it teaching zone concepts one week or man to man the next, or how does, how does that process work when you're trying to install not only your scheme offensively, but as, as a scheme as a whole? Well, I, th I think you're headed in the right direction about the, about the way you do it. I mean, obviously you're trying to work on some zone concepts, some gap schemes uh, from a protection standpoint, some man schemes, some gap protections, some play action protection. So you try to categorize these and have a certain amount each day that you're trying to focus in on, on like in terms of what you're calling uh, ball plays. We may install some stuff on a particular practice and we don't not necessarily run it out there, but we're trying to get a day ahead maybe in the installation and the mindset of uh, what we're trying to get accomplished. So with all that being said, we've, we've thrown a lot at these kids in four days overall. Like total run concepts, total pass protections, um, you know, uh, formations, motions, shifts, all those different things that uh, that these kids are uh, having to work through right now. And you, you mentioned kind of in your in introductory press conference about getting to know the guys and understanding and building a bond before you can build and teach. How has that process gone? And what's the secret to building trust early on? I think it's just like anything else. It's like once you get to know someone, right, and you, you like you understand this person, like you totally get this person. Like I think the more that there's a connection, right, so now I know how to coach him. I know how to motivate him. I know how like visually or conceptually he's looking at things because you may maybe in there talking and installing something like, well, like this, this, this one kid may be thinking, thinking of it a different way because that's the way his mind worked. So you have to ask a lot of questions too, you know, and it's a two way concept. It's just not me or, or coach Satterfield in there just up there talking. You know, there's a lot of communication back and forth. There's some give and take. All right. Hey, this is a better way to do it. You know, I'm talking about coaches, whether it's the players and a coach, those relationships are very, very critical on how you build this thing and uh, making sure that they have input so you can hold them accountable too. Hale McGrenner. Yeah, Coach, one more, and, and probably tough to tell since you guys have only done two days in pads, but have any of those guys on the defensive line been particu particularly disruptive or giving your guys a hard time? That I, 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 I'm going to be honest with you. I, like, I really – like, I love our defensive players, but I couldn't tell you one person over there right now. Like, I would – when I say – don't don't take that the wrong way. I am so ingrained on what my guys are doing right now and what we're doing on offense – I don't really pay attention to who made a play or who didn't make a play on defense. Uh, there's certainly some players on that defensive line and at the linebacker core uh, in particular because I do see those people more than the others. Uh, but to single out one person, I, I'd, I'd be doing a disjust, you know, not, I would probably not be correct on like giving somebody the praise that they need. Okay. So I think it's a little bit unfair for me to do that at this point. Joe Machica. Hey, Coach, one more thing. Uh, is there, like, one thing you guys are working on in particular, one consistent thing that you've been harping during practice for guys to work on uh, and to going into the season to look forward to um, a specific technique or just, just something guys can be doing extra? Be physical. Yes, sir. Fast. We want to be fast and physical. Whatever we do, just do something really fast and really physical, and generally good things will happen. Yes, sir. Colin Taylor. Eric Douglas and, and Dylan Warner are two guys that have obviously, you know, been here a while and, and played a lot of games. Just what have you seen from them so far from not only a physical standpoint, from a, a leadership standpoint as well? Well, both good, both really good. And it's uh, Dylan's birthday today, by the way. And uh, he's 21 years old today. I, I heard his feelings this morning when I thought he was 22 or 23 because it seems like he's been around here a while. But uh, he, uh, he's a great kid, and uh, Eric's a great kid. Both those kids are trying to lead. Both those kids have played a lot of ball here, so they're conceptually they're probably ahead of most guys. Uh, and, and Gwen, I would think Gwen, who's played a lot of football here, is conceptually ahead of a lot of people at this point. But, uh, you know, those guys uh, are all trying to lead. There, there's, there's not one guy that's just like head and shoulders above everybody else in my room in terms of leadership roles. Um, but that won't, and that won't be defined for a little bit longer as we continue to move through this thing. 
Uh, but I like what those guys are doing. I really do. I really do that. They have a care factor. They want to do right, and uh, they want they want to be physical. Does it help to have three or four guys in the room that have played twenty plus twenty five games over the course of their career? I, I, again, I, I, anytime you can have SC experience and you have experience in the O line, you got a chance. Now, I didn't mean that. Don't mean those are the guys that are going to play. What that means is you got a chance because they've done something, right? Whatever that is. And I like they all got a clean slate as far as I'm concerned. I don't like whoever's played or whatever, like it doesn't matter. Like it's who's going forward is what what does matter. But there is, you can tell a difference in a guy that has in that position, you can tell a guy that has more reps than others. All right, because it just you can't cover everything that's going to happen on a particular play for an offensive lineman. Like, like you would you would spend hours upon hours on one play. There's some things that just naturally have to happen because you've seen it and done it before. Does that make sense? And uh, so, uh, guys with experience generally have a better chance of playing there. Yes.